KX News, your local election headquarters, presents a U.S. House pre-debate special. Now, here are your hosts, Jim Olson and Chad Mira. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for sticking around for this special half-hour pre-debate show. I'm Chad Mira. And I'm Jim Olson. Glad to have you with us this evening as we will get ready for the debate that's coming up in just a half hour or so. We're your local election headquarters and want to help you get prepared for the big election because this will play a role in who controls the U.S. House in the next session. It's an important race, that's for sure. And tonight, Republican Kelly Armstrong, Democrat Max Schneider, and Independent Charles Tuttle will all take the stage to make their case as to why they should represent North Dakota in the U.S. House. Yeah, matter of fact, uh, we are going to be hearing from those candidates throughout the evening. And, of course, uh, the uh, debate actually starts an hour, uh, about a half hour from now, rather. Now, none of these three have held statewide office. It's the first time that that's happened in the state's House race since 1963, when Mark Andrews was first elected. Two of them do have experience in the state legislature, though. That's right. Armstrong is in his second term as a state senator from District 36 in Dickinson. Max Schneider also served a couple terms in the state Senate. He was elected in 2008, again in 2012. And he served as the minority leader in the Senate, actually, when he was with the state Senate. Mm -hmm. He's currently living in Fargo. And as for Independent Charles Tuttle, he thinks his lack of experience in elected office is a positive for his campaign. Never held elective office, but he has played a role in some political petitions, including getting initiative measures put on the ballot. Now we are just two and a half weeks out from Election Day, and tonight our House candidates face off for the fifth and final time. Yeah, we're your local election headquarters covering the races that matter the most. Republican Kelly Armstrong, Democrat Max Schneider, and Independent Charles Tuttle will have an hour trying to win your votes. Our Malik Rankin is at the Heritage Center right now as preparations are underway. Malik, good evening. From the beginning of the last U.S. House debate, all three candidates have already arrived here at the Heritage Center. And as you can see over my shoulder, so have those that are coming to watch the debate in person tonight. Now I've been here as they've been setting up for this show. Let's take a look behind the curtain. The debate starts at 7 and goes for a full hour with no breaks. Each candidate was given tickets for staff and supporters. The audience will be split based on who they're supporting. Signs, noisemakers, or political clothing will be a reason to get you stopped at the door. Security will be both in and outside the building to ensure no audience member distracts during this live show. Each candidate will be on a high top chair on the stage and allowed 60 seconds to respond to questions, 30 for rebuttals. A moderator will be in control of the discussion, ringing a bell when their time has ended. Tonight's questions were provided by North Dakota voters and the North Dakota Broadcast Association journalists. Dave Thompson is the moderator for tonight's event. I'll be speaking with him in just a few minutes as we gear up for the show. Chad and Jim, back to you both in the studio. All right, thanks, Malik. Candidates will be coin flipping to determine the order that they'll be answering questions this evening. That's right, and right now we're joined by a couple special guests here tonight, some political veterans, if you will. <laughs> state Senator Jessica Onyuru, Republican, thanks for being here, thank as you. well as a Democratic former state representative, Jessica Edlin. Thank you both so much. Yeah, we'll be getting some insight from the two of you as the night goes on. They're ready to go and tell us what they think, talking about what we can look forward to in the debate and some of the other top questions that we might have as time goes along as we get ready mm -hmm. for this big event. Yeah, we actually took to the street to ask people some questions of you guys to see what we might hear from candidates tonight. So we're going to start with you, Senator Unruh. Here's our first question. Um, are they willing to uh, protect pre-existing conditions in health care plans for all people? So we have a question, Senator Unruh. Uh, people curious if both candidates are willing to support uh, patients with pre-existing conditions? Uh, I think that's just a given, Chad. Uh, what we've seen in every Republican proposal brought forth regarding health care has included uh, pre-existing conditions. What we need is to have our consumers in charge of their own health care, and I think that both candidates will push for that. I think Senator Armstrong brings an additional level of support to that concept uh, by the way that he works with the Trump administration, has been and will continue to once he gets elected to office. Very good. And let's get uh, your take, too, Jessica. Yeah, thank you. And thanks so much for having us here. This is very mm -hmm. exciting to absolutely. do this show. So uh, state sen former State Senator Max Schneider absolutely will protect pre-existing conditions. And pre-existing conditions are very important to a lot of people in North Dakota. 300,000 people have pre-existing conditions. And Senator Max Schneider actually supported uh, Medicaid expansion in North Dakota, which actually covers 20,000 people who wouldn't have access to affordable he health care. And it's something that I hear as I'm door knocking throughout the state is, 
Yep, people are concerned about health care. They want affordable health care. They do want to be in charge of their health care, and pre existing conditions are extremely common. Lots of people have them, and I can guarantee you that Max Schneider will be there. He'll work with Democrats and Republicans alike to protect pre existing conditions for North Dakotans. Okay, thank you both so much. We're going to pick both your brains more a little bit later on. Now, over the last couple of weeks, we've gotten the chance to sit down for one on one interviews with all of the candidates. Yeah, we decided to have a little bit of fun with the candidates too. We had each one do a 30 second word association game. We gave words and asked each one to answer quickly. <laughs> yep. That's right, and we're gonna start with Tuttle. 30 seconds in the hot seat, here you go. Political ads. Negative. North Dakota. I love it. Dapple. Don't know. Okay, the Dakota Access Pipeline. Oh, Dakota Access Pipeline. Yeah. Uh, um, solved. Fast food. Horrible. <laughs> High school. Great. <laughs> Congress. Bad. Washington, D.C. Cesspool. And last but not least, winter. Cold. <laughs> <laughs> I think you passed. <laughs> it's been a cold October as well, I guess. Yeah. Coming up next in the, the show, uh, how will the race here in North Dakota influence the balance of power in D.C.? This week leading up to the U.S. House debate, we wanted to find out what you think of this race for the state's lone House seat. Lauren Kahlberg joins us now to find out what we learned. Yeah, each day this week we've been asking Facebook poll questions in hopes of learning how voters feel ahead of November. On Monday, we asked if you feel you know enough about the U.S. candidates to make an informed vote in November. That poll ended with 58% saying yes, they know enough about the candidates to vote, while 42% still said they don't feel like they know the candidates well enough. On Tuesday, we wanted to know if people felt the U.S. House race is as important as the Senate seat that's up for grabs. 70% of those polled said yes, they do. 30% said no. Wednesday, we asked if two years was too short for the House of Representatives to make a difference in Washington. And the way it looks on this one, 63% said no, it's not too short, and they expect their representative to fulfill promises quickly. 37% said yes. Thursday, you all weighed in on the question, do you think North Dakota should have more than one representative? 64% of you would like to see more representation in Congress. And then today, we asked if there should be term limits in Congress. So far, 93% of you say yes. So some interesting thoughts. Chad, over to you. 
Yeah, 93%, big number. I'm back now with Sandra Unruh from District 33. Thanks for being here again. And just kind of piggybacking off of those poll numbers we saw, I, I actually had a moment with one of the candidates after an interview and he said, you know what, thanks for recognizing that there's another race in the state going <laughs> on. I think he felt the Senate race was kind of overshadowing this one a little bit. Are you, are you concerned that people might be overlooking the House race right now? Oh, I was really happy to see the percent of people who feel like they're informed enough to vote on this race. I think the candidates have done a great job getting out and getting their message out. I know Senator Armstrong has worked very hard to make it to every small community in North Dakota. Uh, our coffee shops are where really our ethics commission and, uh, and our ballot boxes. And uh, those local coffee shops are where a lot of decisions are made and that's where, where Senator Armstrong has been heading. And we know a lot about uh, th the two major candidates uh, from the two major political parties, Armstrong and Schneider, but Tuttle's also on the ballot. He's listed as an independent, but refers to himself as a staunch Republican, a big Trump supporter. Is there any concern that someone like that could steal votes from the Republican candidate? I think Senator Armstrong has proven uh, through his years of leadership in the state, whether it's been a state party chairman or a state senator from his district, uh, that he is the one to take the Republican agenda here in North Dakota to D.C. and make a substantial change. So you think voters will still recognize that even though there's a potential another Republican option out there? I do. And again, I go back to the poll that you guys just had on the show. Um, voters are informed and I like to see that and I, I have confidence that they'll pick Senator Armstrong. You've worked with Senator Armstrong and uh, Max Schneider when they were both serving in the state as well. Do you feel like both of them have a good grasp on uh, North Dakota politics and would represent our state well? Well, I think they do. Um, I, as you said, I did serve with both of them. I came into the legislature uh, with Senator Armstrong, and it was fun to work alongside of him on issues because he's got a way of bringing both Democrats and Republicans to the table. He tackles a hard issue. He's passionate about things, and if there's something he's passionate about, he's bringing everybody to the table who needs mm -hmm. to be to the table. Senator, um, Senator Schneider uh, thought Hillary Clinton would be a fabulous president. I don't think that resonates with the voters here in North Dakota. Okay, Senator Unruh, thanks for your time. Let's go back over to Jim. Yeah, we've been talking about uh, Kelly Armstrong quite a bit, so we think it's probably his turn in the hot seat for our 30-second word association. Take a look. North Dakota. Home. Fast food. McDonald's. Dapple. Oh, bad deal. <laughs> uh, Congress. Interesting. Football. Uh, don't watch it. Don't watch it. Dogs. It's hunting season. <laughs> okay, dogs. Dogs, black lab, and English pointer. Cats. Don't like them. Okay, more of a dog person. Baby boomers. Um, they're getting older. Okay, that's 30 seconds. <laughs> Gonna have to end on that one. All right, more word association for you. U.S. Farm Bill, critical. We'll look at the impact on the race as our special pre-debate coverage continues on KX News.
Our countdown continues. We are just about 15 minutes away from the start of the U.S. House debate taking place in Bismarck. KX News' Malik Rankin is standing by with our moderator of tonight's debate, Dave Thompson. Malik. Thanks, Chad. I'm here with Dave Thompson of Prairie Public, who's moderating tonight's event. Now, Dave, you've been covering politics for a while, and you've heard all three candidates speak already. What are you expecting out of tonight's debate? What I'm expecting is a very spirited, but I think very respectful debate. All three candidates have shown that they're willing to really debate on the issues, but it doesn't get personal, and I really do appreciate that. You'll find some areas of common ground, but some areas where they do have distinct disagreements, and it's all done very respectfully. Well, thank you so much. We're looking forward to the start of the show, which is just minutes away. I'll send it back to you in the studio, Jim. All right, thanks, Malik. Now I am joined by another Jessica. Jessica Edlund of Jamestown is here, former state representative. Good hey. to have you with us. Yeah, thanks this for evening. having me. Thank you for coming out. Now, I understand you're a Democrat. I just want to make mm -hmm. sure we get that out yeah. there. And you've spent a lot of time, you said, knocking on doors in the Jamestown area where you live. Yep. So what, what's your sense? What do you feel out there right now? So I've actually talked to people at the doors who are concerned a lot about health care, the pre-existing conditions, and they want to make sure that whoever we send to the U.S. Congress is willing to fight for people who have pre-existing conditions. And Max Schneider is definitely the person who will be willing to fight for that. I've also actually heard from teachers at the doors who teach in rural communities who are very concerned about the trade war that's mm -hmm. happening. It's having, okay. it's having an impact on farmers all across the state, as I've heard from farmers in Epping and farmers in Wapaton and farmers in Cavalier. And it's really having an impact on bottom lines and where they're storing and being able to um, sell to elevators. Mm -hmm. and what the basis price is. Well, tell me a little bit about how you see, like, kind of looking at it as from a statewide perspective, how do you see the Democrats doing this time around? They've had a big disadvantage the last several sessions as far as a Republican sure. supermajority. Do you think there's any chance of taking a bite out of that? Yeah, I do. I think also there's a lot of good statewide races in place. You've got Josh Boucher running for Secretary of State. He's got a lot of uh, great ideas. Ky Kylie Overson is running in for the Tax Commission office. And Max Schneider, we're so fortunate to have him running for Congress. He did a great job in the North Dakota legislature working with Republicans and Democrats alike. And we'd be very fortunate to have his voice in Congress for North Are Dakota. So as you get ready to watch this debate, are there some key issues you want to listen for? Like you told me what you'd heard on the street, but how about the candidates? What do you think they're going to hit on? They should hit on health care and uh, the trade war, and they should talk about um, education because that's what I'm hearing at the doors. That's okay. what people are concerned about is kitchen table issues. All right. Well, thank you for coming out. It's good to see you. Yeah, thanks for Jessica having me. Jessica Edlund from Jamestown. Yeah. Nice job. Now, time for Max Schneider's chance in yes. the hot seat with the Word Association. Here we go. Political ads. Too many. Crystal Schneider. Beautiful. <laughs> good, good word. Uh, North Dakota. Awesome. Dapple. Controversial. Fast food. Delicious. High school. Long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Congress. Needs work. Winter. Love it. Football. Something I played. <laughs> <laughs> Exercise. Need more of it. Okay, that's it. <laughs> Need more of it. That will, we'll count that as one word. About 10 minutes. We'll have a last look at the well, look, facilities coming up after this.
Thanks for joining us for the Your Local Election Headquarters special report in advance of tonight's U.S. House debate. Polling for this House race has stayed fairly consistent over the past several months. A poll done by KFYR in June showed Kelly Armstrong leading Max Schneider 46 to 35 percent. A poll conducted by the AARP of voters 50 and older in August showed a wider range, a bigger lead for Armstrong at 49 to 30 percent. But the big issue, one 19 percent were undecided in that one. In September, Gray TV had Armstrong leading Schneider by 14 points. Also in September, Fox News did a poll showing Armstrong with a 51 to 34 percent lead, 12 percent still undecided. And in the latest poll released by Fox News in early October, not too much change from those previous polls. 51 percent for Armstrong, 34 percent for Schneider and 15 percent undecided. Now of note, Charles Tuttle, who is also on the ballot for the U.S. House, has not had his name involved in any of those polls that were done. And a very significant number of undecided votes there. Thanks, Jim. Now farmers could be missing out on a lot of financial support with no farm bill in place. And as politicians campaign for votes, North Dakota producers are waiting for word on the farm bill. The previous one expired at the end of September and with the potential for several new lawmakers heading to D.C., who knows where negotiations will go after the election. Exports are big business for North Dakota wheat growers. Exports are, are half of the, the market for, for our wheat producers, and you're going to find a similar situation whether you're talking with soybean folks, the corn folks perhaps, and our, our amazing livestock industry as well. Fisher says they all benefit from the foreign market development program under the 2014 Farm Bill. That's how we pay the Americans that work in the foreign offices uh, of U.S. Wheat Associates. that are the boots on the ground over there, uh, working with uh, technical servicing, uh, with all the market development efforts to build, maintain, and grow the markets in these, these very important market countries. The program provides match funding at a two to one ratio for whatever the Wheat Commission invests, which is $1.1 million. So that's $2.2 million that's at stake here per year. It's at stake because the foreign market development program is what's known as an orphan program under the farm bill, meaning its funding ran out when the bill expired in September. To leave our farmers and ranchers with an additional level of uncertainty when they're already dealing with the effects of a trade war, when they're dealing with year after year of record low commodity prices, it shows Washington at its worst. There were 39 of these orphan programs that provided 2.8 billion dollars in spending across the country over the past five years. With the drought we had last year, obviously commodity prices this year, now more than ever, we need our, our farmers and ranchers in North Dakota need the security. The winner of the U.S. House race might have a voice in D.C. when farmers need it the most. Fisher said if the response is fast enough, you might not notice an immediate impact with missing these programs, but they cover a number of things like research, conservation, rural development, and trade. Now, another thing we'll be deciding on this election season is who's going to control Congress, Republicans or Democrats. Yeah, and that will have an impact on everything from the health care debate to the Russia investigation. Our Washington correspondent, Alexandra Lamone, takes a closer look at the fight for control of the House of Representatives. Democrats say a blue wave is coming. They're increasingly confident they can gain the 23 seats they need to take control of the House of Representatives. Democratic strategist Tim Hogan says Democrats are focusing on what matters most to Americans. Health care. They're spending money running ads talking about their opponents voting to take health care away from their constituents. According to the nonpartisan Cook Political Report, there are 47 toss-up seats and another 61 competitive seats around the country. Democrats see a real opportunity. But this is the most expansive battlefield that they have seen in more than a decade. Anger over Justice Kavanaugh's confirmation and the Russia investigation could be a motivating factor for Democratic voters. But Republican strategists say there are plenty of things motivating their voters too. They did cut taxes and in cutting taxes and reducing regulations, we have the lowest unemployment that we've had in years. Jenny Beth Martin is chairman of the Tea Party Patriot Citizens Fund. Its strategy is to get what she calls only Trump voters to vote again in the midterms. These are people who came out and had not voted in the previous 14 years and then they came out in 2016. So they were motivated by President Trump to come out and vote. So if you haven't decided which way you're going to vote in the House election, this is a good chance for you tonight to find out. We've heard that some of the key issues are going to be, oh, health care and uh, any other farm bill, things like that. Mm -hmm. A good reason to watch closely. Absolutely. And if, knowing the moderator, Dave Thompson, over at Prairie Public, they'll cover it all. And it begins right now.